Hi, this is Dory with Prairie Scraps, and um, I'm coming to you today to show you how to make, I'm actually gonna be kind of trying this out. I'm making some glasses and mugs. Um, I've got some tumblers and some wine glasses. I guess I'll go further away. Um, I'm gonna do some ink printing on them using Chocotour ink. I do not represent them or make anything, but I do have a lot of this, so I, and I like the way it turns out professional so that I can sell it at my craft fairs. So I actually picked up these. Um, these were actually Libby. They're really heavy duty glasses. I think I got them for like um, 59 cents maybe at the thrift store, and there were only a set of three. They're kind of a little bit on the black grayish side, so I thought I would do them and each with a different saying on them um, with the ink. So I've got the all, all yeah, or all, yeah, yeah. And so the adventure begins. I have on another one, and then let's get lost with a little tent on there on another one. I just put those um, transfers on first, and then I've got a couple of Dollar Tree wine glasses. I tried to pick some out that weren't, you know, were kind of nice looking, and I got let's go explore, and so say yes to adventures and then I'm gonna do a couple of mugs that I got at Family Dollar for a dollar a piece um, but first coffee and the other transfer this, for this is I don't I can't remember what it says but oh coffee and sunshine but I like the but first coffee and they sell the most at my craft fairs so this is the Chalk Couture um, so I'm gonna get started go ahead and scribe below make sure that you ask any questions if you have any um, and like it and comment and share this, of course. So I am using the teal, I think it's permanent ink, so you don't wanna spill it on anything. Um, yeah, couture teal, it's called. And it is an ink, so it's permanent, but on glass, you want to heat set it. I'm just gonna go ahead and start putting these on so I can get these done. And um, get those put on there. This one, I'm not sure how it's gonna work because it looks like some of my, um, transfer is see-through um, they are like a silk transfer so if some of it comes off then it will go through so I'm trying not to get into that area and get those little speckles um, you can kind of see like up here it's kind of worn through I'm not exactly sure what happened to it but I'm gonna try it are any of the kids up can you help so then we're just gonna peel it right off. Whoops. Oof. Get that off. Use my a cloth. And you wanna peel from the center so it doesn't bend too much. But putting them on glasses, I did this ahead of time so you didn't have to sit and watch me do it. The reason being is that it's kind of hard to get all the bubbles out. I'm just gonna pull that off and you can see how that looks. And I'm going to hand that off to get washed right away so it doesn't stay on there. So, and so the adventure begins. So, that's the first one. Um, to heat set these, I'm going to put them, oh, and it's got a little bit along the edge there. You want to pull off any extras, and it did indeed get little speckles on it. You want to pull those extras off before you heat set them. I will be heat setting these in the oven. I'll put them on a cookie sheet in a cool oven and then turning it on to 350. And as soon as it hits 350, um, then I will set the timer for 30 minutes. And as soon as the timer goes off, I will shut it off um, and let it cool off on its own. Pick, I'll take them out the following day. So that's how we heat set them. And they do get like kind of a raised edge to it. I'm trying to get this without. A Q-tip would work much better. I haven't grabbed that out yet. Um, so there it is. It's able to kind of clean it up with a cloth. So I'll put that in a cookie sheet, and then we'll do the oh, oh yeah. I think that's what it says. Comment below if I'm saying it wrong. I don't know. I'm getting tired. It is Make It Monday today, and I usually try to share one of the craft projects I'm making. Over the weekend, we did a craft, a smaller craft show in a neighboring town, smaller town. But um, this year, it's the third year they've done this small one. They asked us to come last year, and we hadn't planned on it ahead of time, but we had enough stuff left over from our big craft fair in our own town that we were able to go over there and do it. And we thought it was a success because all of our money for our craft fairs 
go to my 15 year old son's trip to Japan this summer for 4-H. And so this year we went ahead and signed up and thankfully it was before the big one. So actually it kind of let us set up in a smaller setting one time before we got to our big um, one in town. All right, so we'll see how this came off. And this kind of gave us a trial run, but this year we actually made double the amount that we did last year. Last year we did 200, which was, I think, okay and well worth it. The, the booth is a re very reasonable price. It's only $20. So really we're not out anything other than having to pay taxes. And that one came out really nice too. I like that. Little smudges on there. I think I might be smudging on myself. All right, so we'll line that one up. This one's Let's Get Lost. Um, so we sold, been watching my videos, we sold a lot of those gnomes. I think we, in the small place that we did, we I think we sold 11 or 12, about a dozen of those little gnomes, and we sold one of the bigger tree gnomes. I'm not sure if we've got them priced too high. That was one thing. It's always hard to tell how to price, and so we kind of tried out. Last year we did the gnomes for $10 and they went really well. Maybe I should have raised it to 15 and the other ones, the bigger ones to 20, I'm not sure. Because now I'm sitting here with, I think we figured out we have about 10 of them left and I'm not sure if I'm gonna have enough for the next craft fair, but I am going into surgery tomorrow. So I don't really want to do it anymore. So I don't know. We'll talk about it, see how I feel after surgery, if I wanna do some more. So the nice thing about this is you can put it right back in when you use too much on it. Angle. I kinda of wanna go off slow. This one might have some smears because I had some bubbles that were hard to get out, but not too bad. I like it. So there it is. So three of them and we're still under we're just around seven minutes for this whole video and I've been talking okay so one of the wine glasses say yes to new adventures maybe drinking wine is a little bit of an adventure don't know and I, oh always everybody asks what I would price I think last year the mugs I did for five so I might stick with that um, all of these I made sure that I was under a dollar a piece for supplies so that by the time I get done with costs and everything, that's all I have. Um, I'm just gonna get the excess off here. This goes so nice and quick and it looks so professional that I just love doing these. Um, I also did the glass tiles. Ooh, that one's kind of messy. I might need some Q-tips for that one. Can you see, there's kind of a mess in there. So I might, I don't know. I'm actually thinking I can't fix that one, so I think I'm just gonna start over on this one. Um, we did wash these really well, got all the stickers off of them before we started, and actually they, um, the stickers came off really nice and easy on the bottom of them with just hot soapy water. So dish soap, soapy water. They, and it didn't take very long. It's not like we had to soak them overnight or anything. The, the price tags, and they were from several different places. Um, Dollar Tree, Family Dollar, and the thrift store. So it really, they came off super easy and super fast. I put my nine-year-old to that one and she got those tags right off for me. So that was nice. Um, I don't always have the attention span for, I don't like to take off tags. All right, so we'll see how this one comes off. Hopefully, oops, you can see some light areas. One thing with the clear glass is you really can see through them. So you can see where you miss. Oops, this one may not turn out as well either. Actually, this one's not too bad. You might use, you can see the end of the thing. I'm gonna use a Q-tip on that. I'm gonna give another go of that other wine glass that I pulled off and do adventure vibes. 
The hardest thing about doing these is getting all the bumps out of them because the bumps is where it leads, bleeds through. Get me a Q-tip real quick. Let me get that one cleaned off. Yeah, no. And I'm finding the wine glasses, I think, are a little bit more difficult because they're more rounded. So this may not work at all. I don't know. I'll give this one another try, but then we may not. I did um, some round glass ornaments too last year, and I was having similar issues with the bleeding underneath. It's really hard to get these little bumps. You want to get all those bubbles out of there, and yet you don't want to wreck the um, transfer either by pressing it too hard. So it's kind of like a toss up, like am I doing anything? I'm gonna give it a try here. Like I said, I did some coasters last year that you could watch that as well. The coasters I could line up and do four at a time. It's just what I could handle and then peel them off and clean them. I think that one might bleed. We'll see. If you use these on like claws or t-shirts or hats, you do want to heat set them with an iron on both sides. And I've read, I haven't done that yet. I need to maybe try that um, at some point. Um, but I've heard that you want to like heat set for three minutes with a piece of parchment paper on the back side of it first and then on the front side, each side for three minutes. So that would heat set it so that when you wash it, you know, see that one's gonna have a little bit of smear on it too. You can see the smear, but not too bad. I think I can maybe get it off. I'm gonna heat it between. To have a steady hand for sure. Oops. I find I use a lot of Q-tips doing this, but the nice thing is you can correct it. There. So there, it is a little bit foggy. I hope that'll clear up. I think it's okay. Um, and this one, I was going to clean up that little tail. Let's see if I can. This is one of those where you put your tongue in your cheek. Oop. Thing that fell away and then clean up the E on there. Sometimes if they get a little hard they're easier to actually get off a little bit. I don't know. I think it'll go okay. I might work on a little bit more before I put it in the oven. We'll see. Same with this one. Oop, I see I like them to look really professional. So that's one of the things I love with these transfers. Is in general, they look super professional. But they are, oops, I just stuck my finger in it. They are handmade, so sometimes they don't turn out always. Okay. All right, so the but first coffee, I'm gonna actually do this one on a big mug, and then I'm going to use the transfer again on a second mug. So usually I can get two, um, out of it and it's going to be a little messy because I'll have to put my fingers in it to get it really pressed down on the mug but if I can use it twice that would be great because like I said the but first coffee actually went a lot smoother or went sold more last year we sold all the but first coffee mugs that I made last year I think I first and then the coffee and sunshines went after that when there was nothing else to choose from so I decided this time this round I'll just do Do the mug, the butt first coffee. Fortunately, I got it all over my fingers. And now, all over the mug. Okay, so we'll pull that off. Not 
bad, right? A little on the butt, on the U. It's always a debate. Ooh, I just stuck my hand in it. It is still wet, which is neat. Okay, I'm gonna try to get the back side off a little because I think it was in the back side. And then I'm gonna try to line this up again and just run. It's gonna partially color it by just getting it down and hopefully we won't get any underneath. We'll get it nice and smooth with one side and then we'll put some ink on it and see if we can get this to repeat. So, like I said, I found these at Family Dollar for a dollar. Um, Family Dollar is not everything is a dollar like Dollar Tree, but they often have a lot of things that are a dollar. So I'm gonna, what? She. There you go. Okay, I'm just telling me my sleeve is not covered. Now I'm just gonna try to get the excess off. Put that back in. And then we'll peel. Hopefully, that one actually turned out better. And then I'll just do a little bit of correction on this butt. Let's see if I can. Anyway. So that's it. That's all I'll do. I'll put these on a cookie sheet and I'll get those in, heat up the oven to 350 and for 30 minutes we'll cook it. And that will be the extent of how we heat set it. They do say once it's heat set, you can throw them in the dishwasher. I personally would not. Um, I think because they're a hand painted item, you don't want to throw them into the, the dishwasher. I think you want to be a little bit more cautious and maybe wash them by hand. Pers that's me personally. If you have prints that you really, really like, um, I always think like even regular mugs made in the factory, you probably want to wash them by hand. So there it is. I got the everything off the butt first. And of course they have a little bit of variance because they are handmade, but please go ahead and subscribe and comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say and um, have a great night. It's Prairie Scraps.